Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we're super happy to have you here. And if you've been listening and enjoying for a while, I would be super grateful if you would please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's one of the best and simplest ways to pay it forward and help others find the show so that they too can tap into the powerful perspectives and positive vibrations we are collectively emanating. The other unique and magical way to share this show is by sending any friends you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, our Game with the Universe link at positivehead.com forward slash game, also listed in the show notes, which will serve them up a quote unquote random episode when they click it. Just instruct them before clicking the link to close their eyes for a moment and sincerely Ask the universe to queue up the episode that contains the insight and perspectives that they most need to hear at this point in their life journey, and then click to listen to whatever episode is synchronistically served up to them. I have heard time and time again from people about the incredible results they received playing the game, so just tell your friends magical results are guaranteed or their karma back. All right, all you positive heads, welcome back to another episode of the Positive Head Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. My co-host, Dalian Dalian, is sitting across from me. Hello, Dalian. Hi, good morning. Or good, oh, giveaway. Yeah, we are recording this in the morning. (laughs) Yeah. Good uh, afternoon, good evening, and good night. Good, 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 um... Timeless now in which you are uh, tuning in. <laughs> Indeed. Ha, ha, ha. You never left us. Oh, Dalian. Oh, Dalian. Um, Waxing philosophical again. <laughs> or something. Again. I, I uh, don't know. Don't, don't try too hard. <laughs> right? Exactly. Uh, let's see here. Let's get this show on the road. We want to talk about uh, cool, kind of amazing, magical synchronicity stories. Something that is... Uh, Pretty much a staple uh, on, I don't know, probably 50% of the shows, maybe close to it. Um, maybe oh, not I'd say 50. more than that. You think more than 50%? Yeah. I don't know. We should run some statistics, some analytics. Um, so what do you got? Tell us, uh, let's jump right in. Tell us about your, your cool story. Well, this story involves a number 1111, or I guess the two numbers 1111, which uh, I notice that a lot of people are resonating with more and more. Okay, like we, I think we've talked about this on the podcast. I know we have. Yeah. But, and for uh, those of you who maybe are like, what, what are you talking about? I've never heard that episode or I don't know anything about 1111. It's uh, supposedly a uh, 11 being a very spiritual sort of number and you can look it up. And, and <laughs> a lot of people coming online spiritually, so to speak, uh, waking up, tuning into higher vibrations uh, are experiencing seeing 11 11s everywhere looking at the clock and it ever you know it happens to be 11 11 like all the time um and you know supposedly that is a uh, sort of an indicator a wink from the universe uh, so to speak uh that uh you're on the right track and that you're tuning into these sort of high vibrations so yeah i encourage you guys if you're not familiar just look it up and you'll find some cool stuff about that out there indeed so that is what plays into these stories brandon one of the friends of the podcast, you could say, Ashley Myers, is a, a singer, songwriter, and actress here in Southern California. And mm-hmm. she wrote us um, back in October when we were really just kind of first launching the daily podcast, saying she right. loved them and sent us one of her tracks. We played it on episode 120, actually. Mm-hmm. So Ashley has been telling me uh, of stories of synchronicity where she keeps seeing the number 1111, or the, the number 11 and the doubled 1111, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's been happening to me too lately a lot. And I think all of us have experienced a lot of sort of these number synchronicities that are really kind of intriguing. Mm-hmm. So she tells she sends me an email uh, last week going, oh my God, I just had the most amazing 1111 experience I've ever had pretty much. She met uh, a child recently that uh, seems to have a connection with her. This is um, a young boy, I think something like eight or nine years old, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, his name is Zachary. So Ashley met him. And uh, even though the boy was with his dad at the time or whatever, and they didn't know each other, they sort of locked eyes. 
So anyway, long story short, they have they form a sort of special bond. The child feels very at ease with her, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, sometime later, she runs into him at a coffee shop up there in LA, I'm guessing somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. And so she's, um, I guess, in line waiting to get her drink or whatever. So she's got four dollar single dollar bills on her hand, right? So she's got four dollar Once. bills, yeah. right, that she's holding. She sees the child. He walks in with his dad into the. So they're she's like all happy to see him, of course, and he's like hi. So they greet and. She's, she's talking to him for a minute there, playing with him, and uh, she hands him the money. And she's like, hey, will you count this for me, buddy? So he, the child takes the money, takes the $4 bills, and starts laying them out, I guess, on like a little table there, mm-hmm. right, at the coffee shop. So he starts laying them out and counting, like one. He puts the first one down. Then he puts the second one down. And, but it doesn't say two. He says, look, 11. <laughs> so Ashley's like, oh, wow. And then he puts the other two uh-huh. down and goes, look, 11, 11. Uh-huh. So Ashley's like, what? <sighs> and so the child picks up the bills again, but counts him right this time. So he goes like, one, two, three, four. Here you go. Mm-hmm. Hands them back to her. And she's like, wow. Yeah. That's just unbelievable, right? So. Yeah, because she's been having dialogue with you about 11, 11 just keeps coming at her, right? And then all of a sudden she has this connection with this kid who takes in a very creative way, I would say, <laughs> takes her money and turns four dollars into an eleven eleven and says, Look, eleven eleven. Like that's cool. The story gets cooler though. So Dalian is telling me this story before the show and I'm like, uh, let's you know, and a lot of times as you guys know, I've told you before, we really wing the show a lot. What's happening today? What are people writing in? What are we feeling in our own life? What's happening? What you know, what cool video is popping up that I'm really resonating with or have checked out in the last day or so uh, if I share a clip it from another teacher it's we really like to keep it spontaneous because it allows source to kind of come through and give the right sort of messages at the right time to you the listeners as well as us and of course we're all connected so it, there's all kinds of overlap between how many times daily do we hear Someone say, I cannot believe the timing of some of your shows and what's happening in my own life. And it's because we're very closely connected, which is why you're tuning into this show out of all the infinite things out there you could be tuning into. But anyway, sorry, I get on my little little tangent. But so you're telling me about the story. Uh, Well, you'd mentioned it it, yesterday, I think. And then this morning you said, hey, I really want to tell the story of the 1111 with Ashley. I'm like, perfect. Okay, let's see if uh, as we're putting the show together, our little, you know, plan, what are we going to talk about? Um, I go to check to see if there's any new reviews. Well, guess what? There's a new review and it is by AZ Nikki 1111. And she wrote <laughs> Nikki, I'm assuming maybe I'm not sure if it's a girl or a guy, uh, but Nikki wrote 1111, 11 colon 11. So it wasn't just like one, 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 one. AZ Nikki 1111 says, what would I do without you guys? Uh, I had to laugh. Of course it came uh, seconds after, uh, Uh, So this is the second time in a week we've had a crazy cool synchronicity with a review on iTunes. So we had the uh, Consciousness Has No Name one, right, a few days ago. And AZ Nikki said, I'm a new listener and I'm in love. I recently put out the intention that I need to start thinking more positive. The next day I was listening to another podcast and stumbled upon yours. I'm not even sure how it popped up because I didn't search for it. Anyways, I listen to you guys all day at work. I'm hooked and so glad that you do it five days a week. I look forward to going to work so I can listen to what you have to say. I started with the newer episode. I started with the newer episodes and am working my way down the list. Thank you so much for what you do. I feel empowered, motivated, inspired, and and uplifted on a daily basis. Your podcast is a reminder to break the negative thought patterns. Wish I could give you both a big hug. Cheers from Sunny AZ XOXO. Aw. Uh, Nikki, I'm sure our paths were crossed because I'm setting that intention right now. And when that does, I will take you up on that hug and uh, it will be a hug coming right back your way in appreciation for taking the time out of your busy day in life to send the love back our way because this is a labor of love for Dalian and I. And hearing feedback like this is what fuels us to do what we do. It's literally, I can't think of anything that would be more rewarding uh, to do with my life than to sort of help uh, you know, make your life uh, more positive and, and uplift it. It's just such a beautiful uh, experience to, to connect with all of you like this. I'm just, I'm in love with every single one of you listening. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, maybe Nikki, you could follow up with us and tell us a little bit of what the 1111 thing means to you. Yeah, uh, again, yeah, yeah. that's to a know. great idea. 
All right. Well, moving right along. Um, and speaking of, you know, as we request, see, those of you who have been giving reviews, that causes us to get more prominence on iTunes. So those of you who have reviewed us have helped to make it so that the Positive Head podcast popped up on Nikki's feed as a suggestion, which led to her being a part of, you know, what we're doing here. So, you know, I encourage any of you that have been listening, um, and if you haven't taken the time to review, not only does it help, you know, make me and Dalian smile really, really big <laughs> and make our day, but it also helps to reach, you know, new people like Nikki. So you're essentially helping to spread the positivity just by giving us a review. So, Uh, Also, writing in questions. I love, love, love interacting with you guys. I want to hear your stories of synchronicity. I want to hear your questions in general, something that's stumping you, or you just want Dalian and I's perspective. We'll give our, do our best to give you some uh, hopefully valuable insight. And in this uh, case, we had a question written in through the positivehead.com website, by the way, um, from uh, MJ from New Zealand. And MJ said, Hi guys, first let me say what an awesome job you're both doing. It's been enlightening listening to the podcast. I started listening in a few weeks ago and have caught up to the latest one already. Wow, he's listened to a lot or her, she's listened to a lot. Whatever, I'm not sure what MJ is, a male or female, but I'm new to all of this, but I've been wondering if you can have the best of both worlds. Do you have to live like a monk, eat certain foods uh, or stop drinking alcohol completely to be able to be connected to your higher self? Thanks in advance, MJ. Great, great question, MJ. Um, it is, uh, yeah, I, I, the answer, the, the short answer is there is no got to do's anything. I mean, anytime you try and say something has to be this way or else someone will prove it wrong. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, there is no have to. However, that being said, everything is vibration. Everything is energy. So if you want to resonate with the higher vibrations, your higher self, uh, what, what's the best thing that you can do? High vibrational things. What's the best thing, you know, you've heard it said, you are what you eat. You literally are what you eat, right? So if you're putting in, uh, chips and, you know, um, I don't know. What's something else that's really bad, Dalian? Um, um, refined sugar. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chips and cake all day, every day. Excessive consumption of yeah, alcohol. Yeah, and right. alcohol, uh, your vibration is going to be lower. Does it mean you can't have a, a, a profound spiritual experience or connect to your higher self? No, it doesn't. Does it make it easier to uh, run a marathon if you're training, uh, you know, the month before it, uh, running every day? Absolutely. You know, so as a opposed to just running it cold or doing the opposite, laying in bed all day. So you have no energy. So it's just a matter of, I think it, it, people get really caught up on this sort of stuff. And, and, and a lot of us have sort of an OCD kind of part to our, our personality. I know I do. I can really like geek out on things like, you know, make perfecting whatever it is that I'm working on or uh, at times. And so that can translate into spiritual practice or so forth. I've got to be so rigorous. And the thing, uh, MJ, that I would say, whatever you're doing, the most important thing that you can do is whatever you're doing, do it with your full heart and love. And so if you decide to eat that cake or drink that bottle of vodka, do it with all of your heart and soul and say, I, I'm doing this and I'm going to love it to the max because the worst thing that we can do is is drum up feelings of guilt and negativity and judgment about what we're doing. Uh, so I think that's probably the best piece of advice I can give, give you is understand, you know, there is, yes, you are what you eat. Uh, it doesn't mean though, if you start making it rigorous, I've got to work out three hours a day or else. And then what happens? You fall off and, and, and it's becomes too much. Well, what if I just work out when I feel like it, even if that's 10 minutes a day, you know, start smaller. Those are, those can be much more powerful, uh, advancements because you actually stick with it and you grow start eating healthier one meal a day two meals a day and then when you're doing the other thing you're eating the big piece of cake or drinking the booze feel really choose to feel really good about it understand that this is a process that you're going through you you know this is not 
um, you know, this is not a uh, sprint. This is <laughs> sort of a marathon. This you're you're never going to get it done. You're going to continue to grow through eternity. Thank goodness, which keeps it interesting. Every time you reach a new plateau and a, a new vista will open up before you of infinite possibility to go on further and become more of yourself, which is source, which is infinite. So it extends in all directions and, and infinitely. And so you're never going to get the work done. So just stop, relax. You're in eternity how do I take small steps and what feels good and whatever I'm doing I want to feel good about it and certainly not drum up feelings of doubt and negativity and self-judgment and guilt because all those vibrations those will hurt, hurt you more than any bag of chips ever will Before we continue on with today's episode for those of you interested in getting more fantastic fungi in your life I want to take a quick moment to tell you about a friend of mine's brand new company the great mother. Recently, I have been drinking the Great Mother's Superfood Mushroom Coffee Alternative called a Ritual, as well as regularly taking their awesome Ally Microdoses, and I am truly loving both. As you probably know, these days, many of the world's highest achievers and performers swear by microdosing. The problem is it can still be difficult to get a hold of magic mushrooms. That's why when my friend reached out who lives in an area and country where legalization is not a problem like it was in the past and said he'd be willing to offer microdoses to my listeners, I wanted to pass the word along. Ally microdoses are 100% organic. And in addition to a small amount of the magic active ingredient, they also contain functional mushrooms like lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, and other brain boosters like bacopa. Ally is essentially a full spectrum nootropic. And of course, the coffee alternative ritual doesn't contain magic mushrooms, but it has an array of the best organic functional mushrooms in the world. And, you know, With functional mushrooms, it's really important to get them from the highest integrity sources. And whereas some other highly popular mushroom coffee alternatives on the market only contain a few varieties of functional mushrooms in their actual ingredients, Ritual has seven. Not only does it contain more types, it also contains three to four times the amount that the big brands have in each serving and it tastes amazing. I actually like to have it on its own as well as mixing it into my coffee sometimes as well. However, since this is definitely a unique offering, there are a few steps. First, just reach out and request to follow the private page, the great dot mother on Instagram. Once you've been accepted to follow, just message what you're interested in getting and someone will get back to you. Yeah, what he said. You're so right, Brendan. Yeah, what he said. What he double said. C. C. Yeah. <laughs> no, what you said is so well said, Brendan. And uh, I could add a couple things, but no, you're absolutely right because you touched on the essence of what I would have said there. And that's what's really important is, of course, uh, everything is relative, but everything is relative to you. So figure out what that mix of relative things in your life will be, you know, your diet, your exercise routine, your, I don't know, everything really TV watching habits, because the music you listen to, the TV shows you watch, the sites you surf online are also food in a sense, right? It's Mm -hmm. energetic food that you're taking, right? I know we've talked about this before, Brandon, and it is worth talking about once in a while for sure, because there seems to be so much misinformation or just too much information out there that confuses people. Mm -hmm. And I I see it reflected in so many ways when people want and wonder, they want to know what is healthy, what should I be doing, what should I be eating, et cetera. And when you've got all these different contradictory claims, one thing that I saw recently that actually kind of highlights the problem is uh, a segment from John Oliver from his new HBO show, where he's talking all about these um, scientific studies that are very dubious. So of course, you always have to think for yourself, be very careful, you know, examine all the evidence and reach your own conclusions, Right. But I think one thing that I can tell you from my experience happens is over time, if you have this desire to, as, as you said, MJ, to move towards a higher consciousness or to connect with your higher self, that is going to create a bit of a feedback loop where your desire will hopefully move you in that direction. And as you get more and more connected to your higher self, it's going to start feeding back into your body awareness of yourself. And it's going to give you an awareness of what foods are better for you to eat than others, right? It's going to help you figure out sort you, of your like... Your taste change. I, yeah. I, I know for exactly. me, yes. that's, I, I can think of it. There's uh, 
a, a store right near uh, my house called Mother's Market that has just the most amazing healthy food and restaurant. And I remember years ago going into Mother's Market and I ate, you know, way different diet than I do now and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, unhealthy food and so forth. I remember going into Mother's Market and the smell of it would make me kind of nauseous. I, I dislike, it was like, oh, this place is just like, I don't know. I didn't resonate with it, right? And now I go in and the same smell is delicious to me because I've reprogrammed programmed myself by taking those small steps and doing a little bit more with my diet and a little bit more. And now those things that I can, you know, I can go to a, you know, vegan restaurant and be like, oh, wow, this is so delicious. And like, I'm go with someone who doesn't eat like that. And they're like, this is weird and doesn't taste right. And I'm like, yeah, that that's how it was for me too. But as you slowly transition, you, you change, uh, you know, where attention goes, energy flows. And then all of a sudden it, you'll see yourself really transforming and which that's what people don't realize. It's not sugar doesn't, you know, a big piece of cake tastes awful to someone who hasn't been eating it for the last 10 years every two days, you know. It tastes weird. It that's tastes way too point. sweet. That is a great it ta- point. You know, this tastes way too salty to someone who hasn't been eating all this salty food that is just saturating everywhere we look with processed foods and restaurants and salt, 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 salt. Someone who's been eating super healthy without that, they have it and it's going to make them cringe. So why is that? Because they have different taste buds? No, they've they've programmed themselves. They've changed themselves. You know, it's just what you get used to. And so I would encourage you to just... Just start taking small steps, be gentle on yourself, and you are your own unique perspective, as Dalian, you touched on a minute ago, and it made me think of this quote. Uh, that I posted uh, on the Positive Head Facebook page the other day with a really cool gif uh, and it's an infinite fractal rotation and it's from uh, you know our friend Nassim Haramein who Mm, we did I did an interview with a couple months ago who I highly recommend you guys checking it out this is like the the current day Einstein uh, you know with his unification theory I think we're going to look back on him I think he's going to make quite a mark on the world and here's what Nassim said you know and, and think of it as you being the center there's no comparison mj to you or anyone else so you are the center of your own universe as well so that's another thing let's not get caught up comparing what what others do but what nesim said is in an infinite fractal of rotation how do you define the center every point is the center you are the center of the universe observing the universe from your very own center wherever you pick a point of observation in the fractal that point becomes the center from which you're observing the universe that point becomes stillness why stillness because in that point now all the spins of the universe cancel out you need stillness to have a frame of reference for rotation and that's how singularity occurs singularity is the point at the center of your experience of the universe that is the point of stillness from which you're observing the universe and you've got to see the diagram here that kind of goes with it. It's really, really cool because you see this sort of fractal rotation. But each point, if you were to be each point, it's sitting still and everything else is moving around it. And so actually, Dalian, uh, I'll just put this out there now. When we post this podcast on the day that we post it, will you maybe go to the Positive Head page and find that that particular post and reshare it, maybe pin it to the top so those listening can come. I feel like hearing that uh, particular uh, quote from Nassim, if you see the actual image with it, it's going to give you a perspective uh, on it that is uh, pretty profound. It was for me, which is why I wanted to share it and what you you kind of touched on made me think of it. So we'll pin that to the top on the day we of our Facebook page, the day we release uh, the episode and you guys come and check out this cool image that goes with that quote. Ah, yes. I have to agree. As soon as I saw that, I instantly loved it. I loved it on Facebook with a heart. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was so cool. Well, Dalian, I believe we're getting down to it for today. Uh, Another wonderful experience sharing this podcast with all of you. As uh, I mentioned earlier, I really, truly feel love for every single one of you that's out there trying, not trying, achieving, becoming your next greatest and grandest version of yourself, putting in the work, tuning into things that are helping to lift your vibration and giving us the feedback uh, is lifting our vibration as well. So thank you all. Uh, I do have some wonderful music I would like to uh, leave with you today. 
And this is by Andrew Void, and uh, I think in conjunction with uh, the wonderful singer songwriter Amajin Heap and someone else. Uh, I don't have that in front of me, sorry, but um, it's a great, great track called "Feeling Like This." Thank you all for listening. Thank you.